Windows File Systems, NTFS Features and Implementation. This presentation provides an overview of the new technology file system, commonly known as NTFS, its features, and how it is implemented in Windows operating systems. It will cover everything a beginner needs to understand. NTFS stands for New Technology File System. It is the default file system for Windows NT and later versions. NTFS replaced older file systems like File Allocation Table, commonly known as FAT, and High Performance File System, commonly known as HPFS. It was first introduced with Windows NT 3.1 back in 1993. Key characteristics of NTFS include it being a journaling file system, which enhances reliability. It supports large volumes, up to 256 terabytes. It also includes advanced security features and efficient storage with compression. Let's explore the core features of the NTFS file system. The first feature is access control lists, commonly known as ACLs. These provide a granular permission system, allowing specific access rights for users and groups at the file and folder level. Next is file compression. NTFS has built-in transparent compression at the file or folder level, saving disk space while maintaining accessibility. Another important feature is journaling. Journaling maintains a log of volume changes to ensure file system integrity after system failures or power outages. Last but not least is volume shadow copy. This creates point-in-time snapshots of files, enabling backup and restoration of previous versions. Now, let us explore the advanced features of the NTFS file system. The first feature is alternate data streams, commonly known as ADS. It allows files to contain multiple data streams, enabling hidden metadata storage while maintaining compatibility with applications. The next feature is encryption or encrypting file system, commonly known as EFS. It provides transparent file level encryption to protect sensitive data from unauthorized access, even with physical disk access. Another feature is sparse files. It efficiently stores files with large empty or zero filled sections by only allocating disk space for meaningful data, saving storage space. The last feature is symbolic links and hard links. It provides file system pointers that reference other files or directories, enabling flexible file organization without duplicating data. Let's examine the structure of an NTFS volume. Key components include the master file table, or MFT, which is the central database of all files. Then there is the volume boot record which contains bootstrap code. There are also system files containing metadata about the file system. The file system is divided into clusters, which are allocation units, typically 4 kilobytes in size. And lastly, file records which contain file metadata and data. In the diagram, we can see that an NTFS volume is made up of a boot sector, system files, and a data area. The master file table, also called MFT, is the central component. The MFT contains various entries such as $MFT, $MFTmer, dollar sign log file, dollar sign volume, and dollar sign attribute definition. The master file table, or MFT, is the heart of NTFS, containing records for every file and directory on the volume. Each file or directory has at least one MFT record. The default record size is one kilobyte. Small files can be stored entirely within the MFT record. The first 16 records are reserved for system files. And the master file table is mirrored for redundancy. The diagram illustrates the structure of an MFT record, which is one kilobyte in size. The first section is the file record header, which is 42 bytes. The second section is the standard information attribute, which is around 70 bytes. The third section is the file name attribute, which is 70 plus bytes. The fourth section is the security descriptor, which has a variable size. The fifth section is the data attribute, also with a variable size. And finally, there are other attributes also with a variable size. NTFS uses a transaction log, 
or dollar sign log file to maintain file system consistency and recover from crashes. It records metadata changes before they're applied. This enables quick recovery after system failures and prevents file system corruption. It also reduces the need for full disk checks and maintains atomicity of operations. Here is the NTFS journaling process. First, an application requests a file system change. Second, NTFS logs the intended change in the dollar sign log file. Third, NTFS applies the change to the file system. Fourth, NTFS marks the transaction as complete. And fifth, during recovery, incomplete transactions are rolled back or completed. Now, let's explore the security features of NTFS. First, there are access control lists or ACLs. This is a granular permission system that defines which users or groups can access files and what operations they can perform. Second, there is the encrypting file system or EFS. This provides transparent file encryption that protects sensitive data from unauthorized access, even if someone has physical access to the storage media. Third, there are owner and group assignments. Every file and directory has an owner and can be assigned to specific groups, allowing for organizational control over resources. Here is an example of an NTFS security descriptor structure in code. Let's explore the performance and optimization features of NTFS. First, there is the B-tree directory structure. This enables fast file lookup, even in directories with thousands of files, maintaining consistent performance. Second, there is disk defragmentation. Built-in defragmentation tools reorganize file fragments to improve read, write performance, and reduce disk wear. Third, there is file prefetching. This anticipates file access patterns and loads data into memory before it's requested, reducing application load times. Here is an NTFS performance comparison chart. Sequential reads on a typical solid state drive, commonly known as SSD, reach 280 megabytes per second. Sequential writes reach 240 megabytes per second. Random reads reach 120 megabytes per second. Random writes reach 100 megabytes per second. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit codelucky.com for more such useful content.